Welcome to Click Connect. I'm your host, Greg Solomon. We've got another first-time guest for you. But before we bring him in, I would like to thank our production partners, our good friends at Red Roof Franchising and Chicago Title National Commercial Services Group. Hey, you need a new brand? Call Matt Hostetler over at Red Roof. He's got a development team that's great, great alternative for you to look at. They've also got a new dual branded prototype out there. Might be of interest to you. Economy scale, extended stay, soft brand. Give Matt a call. They'd love to hear from you. And please let them know that producer Danny and I sent you over there. As I've been saying, and I will continue to say this, every deal is important. We've got to get our deals closed. They got to close on time. Chicago Titles National Commercial Services Group has launched a hotel practice. They've got a dedicated team of professionals to help you with your hotel transactions. Acquisition, refinance, sale, development. They've got it all for you. Hotel enhanced mixed use development. If you're doing a hotel enhanced mixed use development, hotel, condo, you know, and retail, they can help you through all that. They've got a great subdivision department that works hand in hand with this group. So give them a call. <clears throat> They've also got three points of contact for you. You've got Ryan Huntsman, Stephen Seft, and Stephanie Zapalak. They're the sales team over there, and they will run point for you across the country. So make sure you give them a call and let them know that producer Danny and I sent you. And with that, I would like to welcome our very first guest, new guest of the show. We've got Isaac Stern, Executive Director, Partner Engineering Science, SureBuild. We're going to talk about SureBuild. New product for you guys. I don't think you know a lot about it. So that's what this show is going to be all about besides leadership and hospitality. Isaac, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, Craig. Thanks for having me. Thank How are you? you? I'm great. And great. I am so glad to get a chance to meet you and talk to you. Our mutual friend, Jenny Redland, told me about you and sure build and i don't think the audience knows about it so would you briefly tell the audience about yourself partner and sure build and then we'll get into our questions please sure that's that's a lot of different things so let's yeah. make sure i keep that in line here so uh isaac stern so i have you know an interesting and unique background i'll say so i have an insurance background and a financial services background as well as commercial real estate so uh, partner engineering and science as you know is a, a very large uh, firm on the assessment side we just launched a valuation um, division and you know we kind of do everything in between construction services as well and i work closely with the construction services um, and we had current due diligence uh, uh, products in there already, which would be like your funds control, um, your docking cost review and completion commitment. The completion commitment is basically we ensure that if a GC or general contractor fails for cause, that we'll step in with unlimited resources. So if we think of that as like, oh, that's the gold package, we're building a new hotel, but you want the platinum package, that's where SureBuild comes in. So SureBuild protects against borrower failure. And unlike a bond, uh, the lender is actually the beneficiary. So it's a unique insurance product through Lloyd's of London. Uh, I'm actually headed to London in a couple of weeks here and uh, gonna negotiate our annual renewal. Um, but you know, it's not like Bob's insurance shack. You know, we got like a real name behind us. So it's a it's been around for about two years. We're really excited about it. it. It's gaining a lot of traction, you know, not just in the hospitality, but we do a lot in renewables as well as multifamily and then obviously hospitality as well. So did I get all of the points? That was that was three or four. So yes, you did, good. sir. Thank you very right. much. And I you know, I, I don't know. I'm kind of partial to Bob, but you know, I you know, Lloyd's of London is definitely. Uh, I mean, Bob has some good insurance, but I think like Bob, Bob is like bail bonds, you know. <laughs> you know which, which you so I mean, you may have you know had that interaction with him when you needed to get bailed out of jail, right? Well, I, I'm not, not me personally, no. oh, okay. <laughs> but we may have a, a, asking for asking for a friend. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so 
let's start with pre post pandemic hospitality transactions and construction. What do you, I mean, with your background and it is diverse, um, what are you hearing, seeing out there right now? I mean, you know, so 2019, everything was going pretty well. Um, you know, obviously an upswing since the Great Recession, right? I mean, the Great Recession was pretty, you know, that was a good period of time where not only hospitality was affected, but, you know, housing and multifamily and commercial real estate. So it was a, it was a slow climb up from there. And then we hit COVID, right? And that was a really, really steep drop in the hospitality uh, area, especially, um, you know, one, no business travelers, no leisure travels. I mean, it's hard to remember, but like I lived in Manhattan Beach at the time and they wouldn't let us go to the beach. So like, you're like, wow, this was like everything was closed, right? So, so now I think, you know, coming out of it, we see that, all right, business is back, leisure is back. There's, you know, there's still room to grow. Uh, but I think unlike the Great Recession, this is going to be a much shorter turnaround. So, you know, there, there's a dip, uh, obviously, but it's it's not going to be that five year slow climb out like we saw. I think we're already, you know, going to kind of hit that trough and then go back up again. I agree with you. And, you know, I'm, I'm talking to lenders and brokers and, you know, the brands on a daily basis. And. You know, I think one of the biggest things that has to occur is, you know, got to get we've got generations that have been used to basically interest rates being on par with like a residential loan. OK, those days are done. Um, it, it's going to be a steeper interest rate. But my philosophy has always been because when I got into the business, it was 17, 18, 19. And all of a sudden you had a wage and hiring freeze, you had double digit unemployment, you had double digit inflation. And I think now, you know, you got to get past that shock of the interest rates, but they're still good. You know, if you're single digits, you're good. If you're forced into a refinance right now because of term or something else, that sucks. And, you know, but, you know, life does go on and so does business and you're going to have to adapt. Um, you know, yeah. what, what are your lenders telling you? What are you hearing out there? I, you know, I think that divide on pricing is starting to shrink a little bit. And I think people are starting to understand that, you know, there's a new Marshall in town and, you know, the interest rates are going to be a bit higher. Now, have they reached their maximum? I don't know. You know, Fed, Fed's just raised rates again. Uh, but, you know, let's what's your opinion? Yeah, I mean, I think a few things. I mean, one, it kind of goes back to the old adage of like, marry the house, date the rate, right? So like, you know, I think, you know, if we're, you know, that's a, you know, for a homeowner, but kind of the same thing here. Um, and what we're kind of seeing with the lenders is, I think, fourth quarter 2022, everybody kind of was like, let's wait. So like, nothing kind of, nothing really happened at the end of 2022. I think now... They're kind of going, OK, this is this is reality. Now we're going to have to start figuring out. And so, you know, on the construction side, we did see pullback from traditional lenders quite a bit. And so that actually is a boon for your non-traditional lender. So whether that's like a bridge lender or you know private equity, you know, or they're just coming back and they're putting in more assurances. That's where sure build and the due diligence comes in. Uh, but I think, you know, where that pause happened, maybe people just took that two month vacation at the end of the fourth quarter, but people are coming back now. And I think understanding this is this is how it's going to look. Let's move forward. So I think we're kind of starting to inch up from that really, really slow period at the end of 2022. And I think, too, there's there's some unique things going on. You see, you know, conversions. So office to hotel conversions not super super common but we've seen that and then there's obviously hotel to multifamily which we yeah. have seen in certain areas so you know there's there's creative stuff going on so you may not be that ground up construction that we're used to it may be converting you know office space because nobody's going into the office anymore although i'm actually in an office right now <laughs> well i'm in our beautiful click connect studios in newport there you go 
<laughs> I'm good. Um, you know what? I think you're right. And I'm looking at it, you know, and, and I think some of those conversions are more vertical markets. Um, Manhattan, Chicago, um, uh, parts of Miami, uh, San Francisco, certainly, you know, downtown LA, we have some conversions going on from office to multifamily and the hotel. Um, and I think, you know, you, I think the natural conversion is going to be the hotel to multifamily. I like that, that aspect a lot. Um, but you know, look at downtown Los Angeles and it's such a mess. Um, you know, over the past 10, maybe 14 days, I've spent time in both, um, well, actually in three markets. I was in downtown LA. Um, I was in uh, the Hawaii market and then I was uh, in San Francisco yesterday. And I got to tell you, I was pleasantly surprised with San Francisco proper. It was cleaner than I expected. And unlike LA, I didn't see people with issues on every street corner screaming and yelling at people uh, as I did in downtown LA. Um, so I, I, San Francisco is, is just got its own set of problems and uniqueness that you're not going to find in LA. But, you know, there are a lot of things that are, that are similar. Um, and, you know, what, what are you seeing in particular in San Francisco and, and, La, and the Los Angeles market? Uh, San Francisco, I mean, is probably one of the slowest to recover, you know, yeah. as far as people coming back to the city. Um, I was up there November for a partner client event. And I think, you know, me not living there, just flying up they were like, this is the first time we've seen and been with this many people in the city. So their new normal is probably not quite what it was. I think LA came back a little quicker as well as New York and other places. So I, I don't know. I mean, I think San Francisco, especially you have the tech workers, you're now you're getting some layoffs and then you had all the you know remote folks, which, you know, at some point may or may not be the best way to be working uh, for everybody, especially if they're doing layoffs, you may have a better chance of not getting laid off if you're actually coming into the office and being seen. So San Francisco, I think, has room to grow, but I'm kind of uncertain about how it's actually going to look just because, I mean, it also was so expensive that, you know, it was you know, there wasn't much of a dip anyway. So I think people moved and got used to having a little more cash in their pockets. So, you know, I, it's good to hear that it's cleaned up. Um, I've had experiences where it's not, so and it's not super pleasant. And, you know, it's sad because it's a beautiful city, right? Exactly, exactly. And, you know, it, it, it was funny. There was just one area, and it was not the Tenderloin, uh, that I found to be a mess. And you saw a lot of police vehicles, but you didn't see any of the officers. So it was kind of like, okay, you know, did they just leave their cars here and go have lunch? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. uh, it's, it, it, it's interesting. And I, I flew from Hawaii into SFO and granted, it was a flight that had been delayed and got in about an hour later than what it was supposed to. But the airport was empty to me, which was it's, just it's really beautiful, cool. though, right? I that was the yeah. first time I had seen the new terminal, and it's like you know, it's, it, it, yeah. it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Unlike you know, I, I think you know, LA's got their version of the Golden Gate Bridge, and it's LAX, and <laughs> you know, they start painting one side, get done, and do the other, then it's time to start all over again. I mean, I can't think of a time in the past twenty, maybe twenty-five plus years. LAX hasn't been under construction and it's a mess. It, it's just like, no, I don't even want to go there. You know, it's, I'm, I'm almost at the point where I would rather, you know, um, have a layover somewhere, leave John Wayne or Long Beach and, you know, either go to SeaTac or, or Phoenix and just jump on another plane instead of going to LA. So, I hear you. Let's talk about new construction and hotel pips. And how sure build comes into play on those, please. Um, yeah, I think this is an amazing product. I think it's you know, and I'm certainly no expert, 
But, you know, you've got a secret weapon in Jenny Redlin, and she was really stoking this product up as, as, as she should and, you know, part of the toolbox over at Partner. Um, so how let's let's deal with this with new construction and with conversion of, of commercial assets, whether it's to hotel from office or hotel to multifamily. And then let's talk about the PIPs, the property improvement plans and how you help with that. Because I frankly don't think there's a need for a bond anymore with this product. I mean, that's what we're hoping for, except for the bail bonds. We're not, we're not, you know, bailing people out of jail. But maybe, maybe. Wait a minute. I got a sound effect for that. <laughs> there we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's, really we're in an uncertain time right like i think going back to you know talking about the end of 2022 and now it's there's a lot of headwinds like inflation and oh maybe covid will come back and you have labor and you know political you know things that are changing every day but then you have a lot of tailwinds like uh pent up travel demand so my wife and i used to do an international trip every christmas mostly to avoid our families, but also to, you know, travel and go to other countries. Um, so we went to Spain and Portugal and, you know, spent two weeks and it had been, the last time we were out of the country was 2019 and then came back uh, from Argentina in 2020. And it was like, wow, this is two years. That was a long time. So I'm sure, you know, there's all that pent up demand as well as the business side as well. I think I did like 40 nights last year. And I think there's also the non-traditional hotel usage. So um, where you have offices that have downsized and so you need meeting rooms, hotels are utilized for that, um, you know, off sites, all sorts of different things. So I think there's, there's different use cases than just your leisure travel and your business travel. So with that, we're seeing those conversions and, you know, ground up construction because of the uncertainty that I just kind of talked about, you know, there are the positive and the negative side. Um, lenders will often require, you know, a bond or a letter of credit, some sort of instrument to essentially, you know, a belt and suspenders. So like uh, we want to tighten up that deal, not because, you know, we don't trust you or don't like you, but you know, I mean, there's, you, you just don't know what's going to happen. For example, I had a $30 million project in Arkansas that we just wrote, and that customer of this particular bank had done business with them for years and years and years, but their biggest project was about $6 million. So jumping from a $6 million project up to a $30 million project, they wanted that extra assurance. Um, and in this case was SureBuild. And that's all that was partnered with the partner services, which is the funds control, document cost review, completion commitment. Um, versus a bond, one, you know, we have eyes on the ground with the partner folks, you know, doing the due diligence, and then we also have direct communication with Lloyd. So I don't know if you have ever dealt with a bond, but it takes a long time and they're expensive and they may or may not pay. Us on the other hand, you know, if the borrower does fa fail, the lender is going to be the beneficiary, take ownership or start taking ownership of that project and we will pay. Uh, up to $5 million currently on the limit, which hopefully will be going to 10 here soon of any overage. So for example, if it's a $10 million project fails and now the cost to complete is 14 million, uh, the policy would cover that additional $4 million to cover that project, get it completed, and then the lender can sell the asset. Very so nice. so it's, you know, that's just the lender side too. I'll let you yeah. uh, talk and kind of, I can kind of talk the other side of coin as well yeah no i you know and i and i think you should i i love that idea and i have dealt with bonds in the past and you know it, it's it's not a, a pleasant experience we did a boutique hotel up in northern california and it was you know very very expensive to do we did not fail we did get it done uh but you know it's just the bonds and everything else and, and the thing that i like about your product in particular, one of many, but the first one that comes to mind is that if the borrower fails, 
you can really continue this project with a minimal or no interruption to the construction process. You can keep the GC and, and everybody else paid and keep everything rolling. You know, we had a project in downtown LA that was a hotel enhanced mixed use that I hadn't seen the cranes move in three years from LA live. <laughs> okay. And finally they got a new owner and they were able to get the GC to come back. And I think either this month or next, uh, or it may have already started the construction has, has been fired up again. Um, and that's a huge delay. That's huge money that, that is just sitting there being burned uh, for no reason. So I'm really liking this. You know, what are your lenders telling you? What are you, what are your, you know, GCs and everybody else? I mean, they've got to be ecstatic about this product. Yeah. So the lender side, you know, it's, it's a good backstop and the lenders use it as leverage more than anything else. So we had a, a different project where, you know, there needed to be a cash infusion and the borrower basically said, nope, don't have it. So the lender called that bluff and pushed back and said, okay, fine, we're going to go ahead and start the foreclosure process. Yeah. Lo and behold, the borrower found that 700 grand or whatever dollar amount it was to keep that project yeah, going. Hard. So, it, so it kind of gives that leverage back to the lender to kind of call that bluff. So, you know, the lender, you know, nobody wants to go through a receivership or a foreclosure process yeah. either side, right? Yeah. So, you know, if we can get to a common good, then we'll do it. And that's a good backstop to have there. On the other side of it, so, I mean, we do also work with developers, borrowers, GCs, GCs, especially who are borrowers have a tough time getting bonded one. Yeah. Uh, but all those folks, what we do is really enhance their profile. So we'll, we, we will work with the broker and, you know, essentially put together a package to them so that when they market out to lenders, they have, Hey, we're so confident in our, you know, project and so on and so forth that we're willing to put ourselves through these due diligence uh, measures, both on the partner side and sure build side that, you know, they're essentially marketing and enhancing their profile to those lenders and hopefully, you know, getting the terms that they they like. So we've seen it on both sides, you know, and I think we, especially in the renewable space, which obviously is not hospitality, but there's so many solar projects out there right now that like these guys are running out of their bonding capacity. And so like, they're just stacking stuff up and there's no capacity on Sherbill and there's no money set aside like a bond. So, you know, I mean, we can write a hundred policies if you meet the underwriting uh, standard. So, yeah. you know, that's where, you know, there's just so some, you know, the renewable space is just, there's so much work out there that like, you know, we, they guys aren't doing the work because they can't get bonded on it, not because they don't want to do it. Let's talk about the renewable space for a moment. Now, solar is definitely part of it. Wind is part of it. I don't know if water collection and, and purification is part of it, but it seems to me that it would be. Um, how, how do you come into play with the renewable side of things? Yeah. So, I mean, I think a lot of it with the USDA funding is a requirement. So, you know, those guys need it in order to get certain funding. Um, so partner as a whole, I mean, we have a whole renewables practice. So uh, we have uh, Michael Gross and Gage Kellogg. So these guys are, as well as many other talented engineers. So they'll start from the, you know, engineering aspect of it all the way up through due diligence. And, you know, that can be, you know, small solar arrays all the way up to industrial commercial size, you know? So, I mean, these can be large. We are currently writing a $30 million renewable natural gas project. And if you're not familiar with renewable natural gas, it's, uh, it's interesting. So think of farms and cows and what cows do, and we're going to turn that into natural gas. So, these farmers come together, take all of the cow stuff and turn it into renewable natural gas. And, you know, companies like a Shell or an Exxon are really interested in this because they want to green up their portfolios. Um, and so we've, we're seeing a lot of that aspect as well Is you know, there's different creative stuff out there 
that's super interesting. So, and I mean, like these are not small projects. These are $30 million projects. I wouldn't necessarily recommend putting a hotel next to one of the RNG spots, but I mean, I guess for some people that might be fun. Hey, you never know, you know, <laughs> different strokes, different folks. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what about on the um, um, ocean and, and developing, you know, that resource for electricity? Um, are you working on any of those projects as well? I am not personally, but that doesn't mean our renewable team isn't. Um, I, I mean, the vast majority is solar, um, yeah. but there could, there could definitely be that. I, I'm not involved in any of those projects, so I can't speak specifically for that. Well, I would think, you know, California coastal, Florida, the Gulf Coast, and <clears throat> certainly my favorite, the Aloha State, uh, yeah. you know, big big opportunities there. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's, you know, the cool thing about right now is there's creative stuff going on. So like these vertical grow farms and yeah. like the renewable natural gas and then, you know, stuff is interesting and, and, you know, people are getting creative out there and obviously stuff that we need. And I mean, it, this, the sustainability also does go into like, you know, hospitality and multifamily as well, where, you know, you have, modular construction and you know these using sustainable materials so you know the the green renewable space isn't just solar panels you know it, it plays go. into hotels as well so i mean it's it's really interesting obviously we're going down that road more and more you know i mean i think you know you see lots of teslas on the road and lots of different laws going into effect and phase outs of gas ovens Maybe, I don't know, who knows, but I know my natural gas bill went up like three times over the last month. So I don't know what happened Ouch. with that. Ouch. So yeah, I told my wife, you know, you can't turn the heat on, but you can wear a coat. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 I hope you were sleeping with one eye open, you know. <laughs> but on the couch, know. sleeping one eye open on the couch. Yeah. Couch, there you go. Now, I, I agree with you. I mean, you look at, we have a, ton of hybrids and electric vehicles coming out you know this year and next you know sub forty thousand dollar vehicles um which i think is gonna you know put a lot of stress on everything including our infrastructure certainly our our power grid but you've got gm uh with the amount of dealers that they have in the nation okay it's like most of the population is within a 10 minute drive of a General Motors dealership. So they're putting in the quick charge stations around, if not on site at the dealer, but certainly close by. So I think that helps out a lot. I think there's a lot of other things that are going to come into play that help a lot as well. But I, I just think it's a, you know, teaming up what you're doing and you know ah, the renewables and pace financing and you know bridge financing and and you know, your conventional uh financing are, are all all these parts of the capital stack are interwoven at this point and you know the the service that you're providing with this policy is is a great alternative and and something i think that's sorely needed right now yeah, we're really proud of it. And I mean, I think it's, you know, cost effective. And, you know, I think we work hard to get people, uh, you know, to make it work for the for people. So I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's an exciting product. And, you know, I think as people kind of start moving through again, these uncertain or uneven times, I think it's, you know, something to look at, because I mean, sometimes we talk about like, oh, it's bond or it's letter of credit you know, or it's passing on the deal. And so like, maybe, right. you, don't have, maybe you don't pass on that deal, right? Yeah. I think that's part of it is like uncertainty, sure. But like, let's let's look and see if there's something we can do to still make this deal happen. There you go. Well, speaking of pricing, how does that pricing work? I mean, I'm familiar with title insurance and it's, you know, some cases it's $1. ten per thousand. Other cases it's, you know, six bucks per thousand. What is what's the what's the basic pricing info that you can give to uh, our audience? Sure. So typically, like a bond. So it's all based off hard construction cost. Um, okay. 
So, you know, that's the budget it's based off. I would say we see bond pricing anywhere from the 150 to 350 uh, basis points range. So, and SureBuild along with uh, the other partner services comes in at about a hundred basis points of, of hard construction costs, plus some additional for some of the funds control and stuff. So we're looking at about a hundred basis points for, you know, to protect against GC failure and borrower failure. And then right. we have the other services as well, leading up to that with the funds control and dock and cost review and contractor eval. So I love that idea. I love that you guys have got the, the, the fund control part of it going as well, because I think that's critical. That's, you know, that's a backstop on top of a backstop. So, you know, it's, it's that that's wonderful. Yeah. All right, my friend, it's time for our lightning round. So right. Annie's going to put two minutes on the clock and it's word association. Just the first thing that pops into your head starting now conferences. I did a lot last year, probably not as many this year. Repositioning of hotel assets. Yes. Best hotel market in California. Oh, San Diego. I think you're right. Favorite airport. Long Beach. I live in Seal Beach, so I can basically time it from my door to the gate in 18 minutes. Nice. So my goal is to spend zero time actually at the airport, just straight <laughs> onto the plane. So Long Beach is the way to go. There you go. Barefoot people on an airplane. Uh, no. I, I don't even like people wearing shorts on an airplane, much less bare feet. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm okay with it if it's a, they're going to Hawaii. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Aisle or window? Uh, sub two hours, window. More than two hours, aisle. Favorite color? Uh... Blue? Tequila or whiskey? Uh, neither. Favorite hotel or resort? Red Roof Inn. Nice. <laughs> uh, uh, but besides that, uh, we were, I'm a Marriott guy, and we did, we were in Lisbon and did the Ivans uh, this like a month ago. And it was, I've been in a lot of hotels, and this was top notch. Non-Marriott, uh, Ping Nakara in Chiang Mai, Thailand. There you go. You did that with eight seconds left. Nice. All right, Isaac, what one thing do you want the hotel industry to know about you and SureBuild and Partner? Yeah, absolutely. So I think... Our goal here is to get the deal done. So whether you're the lender, the borrower, developer, you know, we can assist. And I think, you know, obviously there's SureBuild and the construction services, but then we have, you know, the assessment side. So if we're just doing transactions um, and you need an environmental assessment or a building assessment, we have Jenny Redlin or others that can uh, assist in that. But we also have lots of other specialties. So geotechnical and seismic renewables. Uh, we just launched a valuation. So if you need, you know, your uh, asset appraised, we are, we are here for you for that as well. But as far as the sure build side, you know, I, I'm happy for to talk to anybody and kind of walk through that process and, you know, see if it is a good fit. So, you know, whether or not you're the lender or the borrower, um, you know, just kind of discovering what we're looking at and seeing if we can really get that deal done. I mean, that's our main goal is, you know, not adding additional costs to a project, but, you know, ensuring that everybody is feeling relatively good about it and going to move forward versus waiting two or three years to see what happens in the market. So I think, you know, it's an interesting time right now. And, you know, we're, we think we're well positioned with having these uh, additional services. And so I uh, would be happy to talk to you. Perfect. How can they get a hold of you? Let's give them some contact info. Sure. Uh, so email, you can email me at I Stern, S T E R N, like Howard, at uh, partneresi.com. 
or I can give you, I'll give you my actual cell phone number. Um, I go to bed at like 1130 though. So like nothing after 1130. <laughs> uh, you can call me at 310-804-1962. Isaac, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us. You've got an open invitation to come back anytime you want. And I great. I'll see you tomorrow. Connected to uh, um, Keegan Bish over at Stonehill. They great. great lender, and they've also got a pace arm as well. So I think you could fit right in with them and like partner. Um, they're also a sponsor of the California Lodging Investment Conference, which you'll be able to meet Isaac at on March 1st and 2nd, 2023 at the West and South Coast Plaza Hotel. So come meet Isaac, find out about these products that they've got. And, you know, we put a deal together at the conference. We've got every there, everybody there. We've got brands. We've got owners. We've got management companies. We've got lenders. We've got Isaac. Join us March 1st and 2nd, 2023. Isaac, thank you very much for being part of the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Craig. Take care. Thank you, our audience, for joining us today as well. I want to thank producer Danny for always doing a wonderful, wonderful, outstanding job that she does for us on these shows. Couldn't, couldn't do the show without her. So, Danny, thank you very much. Also, I'd like to thank our production partners, our good friends at Red Roof Franchising and Chicago Title National Commercial Services Group, California. And if you need a new brand, call Matt. Matt Hostedler over at Red Roof. He'd be glad to help you and get you dialed in with one of his development team members. You know, they've got economy, they've got a soft brand, they've got extended stay, and they've got a new prototype for a dual-branded project. Give them a call. Let them know that producer Danny and I sent you. Chicago title, very important. You get your title and escrow deals closed on time. They can help you. They can take out the brain damage. They have launched a hotel specific practice within the National Commercial Services Group. And you can contact either Ryan Huntsman, Stephen Saft, or Stephanie Zappalak just joined them. So their team is growing. They've got a dedicated group of professionals to help you get your hotel transaction closed on time. So give them a call and let them know the producer Danny and I sent you there as well. They'd love to hear from you. We're just about ready to wrap up the back end of season seven. We're going to take a little time off around the, uh, conference in March, and then we will be back with season eight. I can't believe it. So if you are interested in being a guest or you want to be a production partner, DM producer Danny or myself, we'd love to hear from you. We read all the comments. So thank you very much for joining us today. Without you, without our guests, without our production partners, we wouldn't have a show. So we're very thankful to have you with us. So as I'm fond of saying, remember to be kind. Share your knowledge. Now go be amazing. <laughs>